Take one, probably take a hundred. Today, we are going to be talking about the top five most underrated skills in tech. And no, we are not going to cover the typical, there's this underrated AI tech skill or underrated uh, cybersecurity tech skill. Listen, there's a lot of underrated tech skills within the two I just listed, but we are going to cover some that are not spoken about at all hardly, but behind the scenes, they are starting to make waves. All right, let's just jump into it. But before we jump into the future, let's take a quick journey through the past to see how we got here. Let's go back to the 80s. Knowing how to program in COBOL or Fortran could land you a cushy job back then. Fast forward to the 90s, we saw the rise of object-oriented programming with languages like C++ and Java. As we entered the new millennium, web development skills became crucial with the dot-com boom. I mean, everywhere you look, people were trying to learn new skills. Fast forward to 2010s, the 2010s, 2010s, brought us on the mobile revolution, cloud computing, and the beginnings that it really became popular of data science and AI as we know it today. I mean, skills were popular such as iOS and Android development, AWS certifications took over, and machine learning became the hot tickets to tech success. I mean, I'm sure if you're watching this and you have been in the tech industry for a while, you have definitely taken an AWS certification. I think we all have, and they're still really good. I'm not saying they aren't, but they definitely had a boom in the early 2010s. But here's the thing. Here's why I really wanted to go back in time before looking ahead to our future. While everyone was focusing on these headline grabbing skills, other technologies and disciplines were quietly growing in the background. I mean, these are skills that are now poised to take center stage as we approach 2025, which is wild that we're getting close to 2025. Today, we're not talking about the obvious ones like AI or cybersecurity. We're going to look at the hidden gems that many have overlooked, probably you and I included, but the industry insiders are starting to really talk about, make noise about. All right, let's jump into it. The first one is edge computing. This is a really exciting skill set that I've started to explore, just read about anyways. Let's talk about it. While cloud computing has been the talk for a long time, edge computing is quietly changing how we process data. But what exactly is it? Processing data closer to where it's generated instead of sending it to centralized data centers is essentially what edge computing does. And here's why it matters. IoT devices are expected to generate 79.4 zettabytes of data, which I can't even wrap my head around, that's wild, by 2025. And this is according to the IDC. Processing this data is so crucial to be done efficiently and effectively. And there's so much career potentials within this. Gardner actually predicted that by 2025, 70%, 75% of enterprise generated data will be processed at the edge, 75%. Sounds like something you could hop on. Next up, we've done a few videos on this, which is a low code and no code development. I know for some developers, they say, oh, Tiff, please, I don't wanna hear those words, but the reality is it's not going anywhere. And if you are willing or able to really get some of these skills, play with some of these platforms, you're in good hands. Now it's important to note, this skill isn't just for non-technical people. It's really changing how even developers work with these platforms. So what exactly do we mean when we say low code, no code? Platforms that allow quick application development with minimal traditional coding. And why this is such a big deal is, it be is because it's bridging the gap between IT and business needs, which typically allows for more rapid prototyping and deployment. The other thing though, is you still need to have a really deep understanding of coding, of development, because if something goes wrong, you need to know what's going on behind the scenes. So it's still very key to have that developer background. And there's a lot of career potential here. Forrester predicted the low code market will grow to 21.2 billion by 2025. That's huge. Okay, coming in at number three, this is probably the one I'm most excited for. You know I geek out about this, which is quantum computing. You've seen it in this video, you've seen it or heard it in other videos here first. I really think quantum computing is going to be the next big wave. We have AI happening right now. I really believe the next big thing we are going to learn and just see blow up in, in a positive way is going to be quantum computing. Now, it might sound kind of sci-fi-y, but it's really rapidly becoming a reality and understanding its basics could really help set you apart. But first, what exactly is quantum computing in simple terms? Quantum computing is a type of computation that harnesses the collective properties of quantum states to perform calculations. Now, that's even that explanation I feel like is a little bit 
difficult to understand, so here is it in very simple terms how I broke it down initially. Quantum computing allows for multiple calculations to be done at once. And this is so powerful because it, coin it will, in infinite times faster, be able to find solutions to different uh, health issues or find different medications or discover different drugs for different things that we have going on, such as cancer, is going to change the way that we are able to innovate and develop at such a quick rate. And the potential for a career with quantum computing is projected to reach 65 billion by 2030. And this is according to Morgan Stanley. Okay, coming in at number four is digital ethics. This is pretty cool if you ask me. As technology becomes more ingrained in our lives, understanding and implementing digital ethics is what is becoming crucial. And you might think, well, how is this even a real skill? How can I get a job with this? It's just listen to what it exactly is. So this is the application of ethical thinking to the digital world, applying this ethical thinking to the digital world. And this might include issues of privacy, AI bias, and data governance. But here's why it matters so much. Companies are increasingly seeking professionals who can navigate these ethics. I mean, especially these massive corporations, they need people who are willing to take the time, have the skill set to understand what is ethical, what is not, how are we building this technology, keeping an eye on all that. And that's a huge job, it's a big responsibility. So there is a ton of potential with this career. So much so that a study by Accenture found that 63% of consumers prefer to purchase from companies they trust to be ethical in their use of technology. So companies are seeing this as a way to gain trust from their consumers. I mean, they should be looking at it from other standpoints, just from an ethical standpoint, but at the very least, they know if they are ethical, they might make more money. And coming in at number five is green tech skills. Now, little story here. When I worked at IBM, I remember a friend of mine who is a software developer. She was really focused on green tech. And I, I at the time, I had never heard about it. I thought, what is green tech? Like, it was, you know, quite a few years ago. And she was telling me about little things we could do in our code or at the office that make such a big impact on, you know, reducing emissions or our carbon footprint. It was really cool. So as the world really grapples with climate change, tech professionals who can contribute to sustainability efforts will actually be higher in demand. And this is pretty cool because it really does take a specific skill set to do so. Skills related to developing and implementing technologies that reduce the environmental impact. Literally, as I mentioned, sometimes it's the way we code. The less files, the less code we have, the less that is run and in turn actually makes a difference. It's pretty mind blowing actually. And you know, when we get to the why it matters, well, that's pretty obvious, but there is some other things behind it. The tech industry is a significant contributor to carbon emissions, and there's growing pressure to address this. So if you are someone who has a skill set to help reduce a big company's carbon emissions, they are going to want you. They are going to want to hire you. And there are so many different courses online to help you with green tech. That's pretty cool if you look into it. And here's a really fun fact. The global green tech and sustainability market size is projected to grow from 11.2 billion to 36.6 billion by 2025. And this is according to markets and markets research. These are the five underrated tech skills going into 2025 you need to check out. Whether you are already set in your career path, adding on some of these skills is huge. I mean, you can already be a developer and then add on the green tech skills, or you can already be, you know, be a project manager and be interested in green tech to keep that example going. I hope you enjoyed this video and going through these top five underrated skills. What are some other underrated skills that maybe I didn't list? I'm really curious to get your take. And I would love to know what skill of the ones we just listed are you most interested in? Leave in the comments. I will do my best to answer every single one of your comments because I love you all. And oh yeah, I gotta say it. Hit the subscribe button to stay ahead of tech, learn more about AI, coding, all the good stuff. I'll see you next time.